Oh, good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with me, Mr. G. Once again, it is Thursday, February 20th, the feast day of St. Wolfric of England. And today's gospel is from Mark chapter 8, verses 27 through 33. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The mystery begins to be revealed. Peter's confession about Jesus. Now Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, you are the Messiah. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. The first prediction of the Passion. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Okay, so, oh, that is the gospel this morning from Mark, and uh, this, is the, this is the turning point in Mark's account from Jesus going from his public ministry to his upcoming passion and death on the cross. Okay, so Jesus is asking his disciples if, um, you know, who, who do they say that I am? Um, see if it's in alignment with what the crowds are saying that he is. Um, and kind of kind of testing them and through this questioning once again uh, that they truly believe in him and, and trust in him. And, uh, and Peter's having a hard time. Like I, I put myself in Peter's shoes this morning, you know, because, you know, people read that, that last part and it says, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, thinking that's very negative. But, um, you know, I'm taking this whole situation as, as very positive because if, if, you, if I put myself in Peter's shoes, you know, you're following Jesus, all these miracles that he's been doing and all this awesome stuff, and you're witnessing it, and learning it, and embracing it, and just realizing just what is so special about this man we call Jesus Christ. And now Jesus is telling them that he's going to, he's going to suffer greatly, and he's going to die. Peter is upset. He's distraught, because he loves Jesus so much, and he doesn't know what he's going to, like, what's he going to do once Jesus leaves him? You know, so I, I like to think of it in those terms. Um, you know, because Peter, Peter loved him. You know, there's a reason um, Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom. It wasn't just because he randomly drew a straw out of a bucket. And Peter, you know, <clears throat> Jesus thought very highly of Peter. Um so that's, that's the way that I'm, I'm going to take this, that second part of that, with, with Peter and the, the response to Jesus <clears throat> saying, hey, my time is ending. And uh, it's going to be up to, up to you guys to carry on this, this Christian faith to this pagan world. Uh, so, so with that, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to relate this to, to those with, with children um, because... You know, Jesus is like the parent and Peter is like the child in this sense. And, you know, just how distraught Peter is. So parents have an inter interesting dynamic. And, and as, as you know, uh, I don't have kids. But I can imagine that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, with, the, with this suffering that, you know, Peter is suffering right now. And he's not fully understanding it. And, but Jesus once saw this. You know, Jesus knows what the will of God is. All right, so parents uh, losing a child uh, to either graduation, um, 
or to marriage or or unfortunately just the death of a child um like how how difficult that is but how much uh we need to learn to to embrace the suffering and trust that that god is running the show and and we're going to be brought to fulfillment in that suffering and hopefully draw closer to him and just learn to learn to let go of different things. You know, Peter, Jesus did all this prep work um, for his disciples, and then eventually Jesus let them go on their own. And then that's how the church expanded, right? So Jesus himself is like a parent where he had to he had to let his children, his disciples go and uh, do, do their will for God uh, here on this earth. Uh, so I think that's very relevant. Um, as well as on the flip side, um, like, you know, you got the parent, a parent potentially losing a child in a, in, a, in a sense. Then you also have a parent losing a parent you know, and how hard that might be. Um, just how hard that might be whenever you lose a loved one, you know, and it's challenging. It's stressful. It's, it's hard, you know, uh, and just seeing the reaction of even... Even my mom, whenever my, I, we lost my grandma, you know, that it's, it's difficult uh, to embrace that challenge. Um, but, and, and that's what um, is going to be our, our challenge today is just realize and accept that we all must suffer to truly know and be committed to Jesus Christ. Um, we have to learn to embrace that suffering and, and trust that God is going to bring us fulfillment in that suffering. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's very easy to humanly um, lose, our, lose our emotional and mental control because the world is hard, right? So that's, that's challenge number one. Just learn to embrace suffering, kind of like what Jesus is teaching Peter here at the end of the gospel. And challenge number two, uh, I failed to mention yesterday. Yesterday was Wednesday, and we are exactly, or we were exactly one week from the beginning of Lent. So uh, if you have not begun the prep work for Lent beginning next Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. Um, take the time to do that. Uh, what do you need to do to prepare and grow closer to Jesus this year during this 40 days, 40 day journey of Lent leading to Easter? So try to think about what you need that will bring you closer, uh, whether it's giving something up uh, or whether it's doing something extra or or both, um, giving up, you know, alcohol or giving up sweets, or snacking between meals, or taking cold showers, um, <clears throat> or maybe doing something extra. Go to mass an extra time, extra time per week, or go to go to confession more regularly, um, which is also th- something that us Catholics need to do. If you're Catholic, you need to go to confession before Lent begins, um, so you can really begin that journey under a under a deeper sense of uh, of grace, the gift of grace. Uh, so that is. Um, Challenge number two, just do some prep work. Um, What can you do extra? What can you take away from to grow closer uh, to Jesus Christ and and build up your faith life during this Lenten season? So that's that. Let's, uh, Let's go ahead and tackle this Thursday, guys. So God bless and have a great, have a great day. All right. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.